Hi and welcome to my random ruminations. Now, I've spoken once before on the same-sex marriage referendum, but this time, but in that case it was my fears for afterwards. Today I want to address the, uh, let's call it the no campaign. In reality what it truly is is bigotry and it is a mass of misinformation and bigotry. Now, I was going to talk about this myself and I have written and rewritten and rewritten things and none of them came out right. And then a friend of a friend named Tony McCarthy on Facebook uploaded kind of a a slapdown, a verbal slapdown to uh, the no campaign and the sheer amount of misinformation there spanning out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read what he wrote. And this is the last thing I'm going to say on the referendum. Okay, so posts Tony McCarthy. Long post ahead. Seeing the blatant misinformation in the no posters gone up today has my blood boiling, as it's an attempt to hoodwink the population. The point about surrogacy on one of them is downright idiotic, as surrogacy already exists, and there won't be battery farms for the production of gay babies. He calls them gaybies. I love that. <laughs> Annoyed me so much I decided to counter every argument I've heard. If your views cast out to the scrutiny, then the problem isn't with the scrutiny. Number one. The referendum has nothing to do with adoption. This was already passed under the Children and Family Relationships Act of 2015. The no campaigns posters and many arguments for a no vote are a deliberate misrepresentation of what the referendum is about. Number two. The point raised about the ideal of a traditional family is moot. We live in a world where there are single parents, divorced parents, stay-at-home fathers, interracial marriages, adoption and surrogacy. The referendum is about recognising a union which has, a, which has significant implications on, amongst other things, tax benefits, hospital visitation rights and inheritance. This doesn't affect you, it only affects the parties concerned. Number three. In relation to point two, legal rights and benefits of heterosexual couples are not affected by gay marriage, nor has there been any demonstrable impact upon, gay, upon traditional marriages in countries where gay, gay marriage has been legalised. The function of a traditional marriage operates on its own individual basis. Number four, two people seeking to have their union recognised will not negatively affect you in any way, shape or form. However, the failure to pass this referendum would Negatively, in fact, people negatively affect people, and not just people seeking to have their union recognised. It negatively negatively affects their families and friends as well. That is a point that I want to expand a little bit on. I know that it hurts my mother that she's never going to get to go to my my wedding. I know it does, in the same way that I know it hurts her that she's never going to have grandkids because of my gender status. It affects her that I cannot marry legally. It affects any nephews and nieces that my brother, who admittedly is also gay, so it's unlikely in that in his side, but it's still possible. It is going to affect them as well. They're never going to get to go to their auntie's wedding. They're going to see me unhappy about it. Of course it affects the families and friends. I have many friends who are gay, I have many friends who are lesbian, and it hurts me that they can't get married. There's one couple in particular, two lovely girls, and I'd love to go to their wedding. I would love to, but unless this passes, it's not going to happen. It's not fair. Uh, point five. Legalising gay marriage will not have an effect on the church, as the referendum relates to the state's idea of marriage. No church can or will be forced to perform a ceremony which is contradictory to its beliefs. However, the next point addresses the church's changeable stance. The next point. Whew. Six. In addition to heterosexual marriage, ceremonies in ancient Christian church liturgical 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 I'm not pronouncing that right. Documents. There were also ceremonies called the Office of Same-Sex Union, 10th and 11th century, and the Order for Uniting Two Men, 11th and 12th century. These and similar unions, i.e. between two women, are recognised in church archives up until the 18th century. Which has to make you wonder what changed in the 18th century. Um, I'd need to look it up, but I'm wondering, is it the point at which 
papal infallibility became a really big, big thing. Or the fact that maybe it's around that time period that the Catholic Church outside of one or two smaller, one or two notable countries became insanely wealthy and suddenly realized they might have to pay, you know, pensions and widows' pensions and widowers' pensions. And the... Number seven, the argument that marriage is for the purpose of procreation ignores numerous factors. Infertile couples who are, are able to get married, couples who never intend to have children are allowed to get married, women past bearing age, childbearing age are allowed to get married. Very true. Which is kind of ridiculous. Number eight. Okay. I saw a comment on, the, on an Irish Independent article today, and it was it literally asked for clarity in the referendum because how do you define which two men could a father marry a son? Could two brothers marry? You're fucking idiots. Number eight. No, no, no. Yeah. Number eight. Marriage equality cannot be seen as a precedent for other ridiculous ideas which have been put forward to argue against it. Example, the foolish argument that allowing a man to, about allowing a man to marry an animal. The referendum is specific in its wording. Marriage may be contracted in accordance with law by two persons without distinction as to their sex. What that means is if you want to get married, you have to get married according to the laws of the states or the state, which has requirements which disallow people who are blood relatives within a certain degree of relationship, which I think is third degree cousins. I could be wrong in that. But up until that, up until that point, relations cannot marry. You cannot and never will be able to marry an animal because it's bestiality and it is illegal. <clears throat> anyway, uh, this does not change the legal age of marriage nor the laws regarding what types of marriage are illegal e.g. incestuous, also bigamist. Although I do see a potential where polyamorous marriage might be a thing that could be brought in, but that's another fight for like 50 years from now. Where was I? Nine, the argument that it is unnatural has no basis in, fa in nature, homosexual behaviour has been observed in everything from bugs to bottlenose dolphins. It has been directly observed in hundreds of species. 10% of rams refuse to mate with ewes, will do, but will do so with other rams. That's right. Rams like the back door. Ho oh. ho! Number 10. Marriage has always been between a man and a woman. Falls down on its premise that the status quo should always be maintained. If this were the case, then women wouldn't have the vote. Slavery would still be widespread in widespread existence in the Western world. Medical conditions would still be treated with magic and prayer. There are some people who still try that. Interracial relationships would be forbidden, which s would suck. I'm, I'm sorry, but... But their girls from other races are really cute. The modern technological era and the Industrial Revolution would never come about, and the development of, the huma of humanity would stagnate. There are those who would argue that there are places where this has happened. I am among them. We don't want to be one of the countries amongst them. I'm looking at you, Russia. 11. This is just a bonus point on the adoption point, which, as noted, is not relevant to the referendum. 30 years of research from an American Academy of Pediatrics has failed to find any significant evidence that children raised by heterosexual couples are any better off than children raised by homosexual couples. Get this, kids just need to be loved. Isn't that shocking? 12. If you've read this far, fair play. As a final point, it boils down to whether or not you want to deny two consenting adults the right to have their union recognised in the eyes of the state. Not having that right is something that causes significant hurt. I repeat that. Not having that right causes significant hurt. Forbidding that right and causing that hurt is an example of humans failing to display humanity. Now... First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much, Tony, for allowing me to read this out on my vlog. Um, you didn't have to do that. You could have said no. I usually appreciate it because you said far more eloquently in that than I had been able to in weeks and weeks and weeks of trying. The points that I wanted to make, the points I wanted to give across. Why can I not speak clearly tonight? <sighs>
I'm not going to talk about the same-sex referendum anymore, except to say this. The people who are going to vote no, you're wrong. You're on the wrong side of history. And I'm not saying that because I'm a liberal. I'm not. If anything, I'm actually a conservative. But being a political conservative is not necessarily tied to being a social conservative. Politically, yes, I am conservative, but socially, I believe liberalism is the correct path. Does the, do I ever expect a time when the arguments that the No campaign are bringing across bear fruit? In all honesty, no. The people who want to marry are not perverts, they're not depraved. They don't want to marry animals, they don't want to marry their brother or their sister or their mother or their aunt or their cousin outside of certain places in certain countries but what they want to do is say we love each other we are going to be together for the rest of our lives let's have a really big day out and then get the same taxation inheritance visitation rights etc etc as any heterosexual couple if you vote no on this, you are saying that one type of love is more valuable than, not, than another and that makes you wrong. And if you want to be Christian about this, how about actually being Christian and remember this, yes, Jesus of the Bible did use the Old Testament in many places. He did reiterate it and he did enhance it, but anywhere where the, where the Old Testament clashed with love, he chose love. If you choose anything but love, you're not being Christian. And with that, I'm done. I will not be talking about this again. So I will talk to you all again on Tuesday and um, have a really lovely day. Bye. I'm gonna go hug my girlfriend.